Um, just bring back my youth a little bit, kind of, you know, think about things that are going on today as well. Uh, people are awakening to different things in the world that's going on right now. And so I want to leave a legacy of art that um, is modern and people can kind of um, look at or relate to. You are listening to the Artist King Podcast. I am your host, DTM of DeltaTangleMike.com. The Artist King Podcast features artists, entrepreneurs, and business coaches who share their knowledge, expertise, and resources to provide insight into the ways we can find our own personal success with our creative talents. Kevin is a multi-talented artist with artworks in oils, acrylics, and digital. He is an accomplished comic book artist and has grown his reach as a fine art creator. His love for art and humanity is evident in his art and storytelling. Welcome to the Artist King Podcast. Please tell us your name and where you're from. My name is um, Kevin Johnson. I'm originally from Louisville, Kentucky, but I'm currently residing in Colorado Springs, Colorado. Colorado Springs. Oh, my gosh. Uh, I'm in Atlanta, Georgia, so you're a little ways away right now. <laughs> it's probably much colder here, too. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. I believe it. I believe it. So uh, tell us uh, a little bit about you. You said um, you said where you're from. It, it, did you grow up? Um and uh and, and and start your art career then or was it after you moved tell us a little bit about when you started being an artist well basically i was an artist all my life you know you hear those stories about people talking about when they were kids they was holding crayons and pencils and drawing on the walls and stuff like that so that was me mm -hmm. uh so i always wanted to be an artist i wanted to go to college to be an artist and i did go to a semester of college for commercial art before the mm -hmm. computer before they had computers they called it commercial art and okay. so um, saw a sign on the wall at the school I was going to who said, join the Army, get the GI Bill. And I was like, man, that's going to be my entry to going to college to be an artist. So I ended up joining the military to get the GI Bill. I ended up meeting my beautiful wife and having kids. and said, well, I guess I got to go ahead and stay a little bit longer in the military. Mm -hmm. So I stayed 21 years in the Army. Wow. And so that's how I eventually got here to Colorado Springs. So I retired from the military base nearby so uh -huh. yeah wow that you went in and stayed in <laughs> yeah, I joined, joined at the age of 19 and got out when i was 40 years old wow wow well congratulations man congratulations mm -hmm. so uh so you saw the military as a route to college as a route to being an official artist so what were the actual steps in real t life that you actually did um, to feel like you were actually a working artist. What is, what was uh, some of those things that you went through? Well, that was one of the things that, you know, being in the military, you're in a whole different world than the normal world. So you only see so much around you. So mm -hmm. the goal was always to be that artist. So the first step was luckily, uh, I'm not sure if you're familiar with the little mini malls on military bases. Mm -hmm. So they mm -hmm. have, sometimes they have vendors on these bases and some of the vendors sometimes sell art. So for one re some reason, one day I had a portfolio in my hand. I was just walking, and there was a lady who sold art at one of her booths. And she asked to see my portfolio. And I was like, okay, check it out. And she was like, oh, man, your stuff is nice. She said, matter of fact, there's a small guy around the corner. If you want to go show the work, go in and see if they want to sell your work for you. So I talked to the owner of the gallery, and he looked at my portfolio. And um, he he liked it, but, you know, at the time, a lot of soldiers would deploy and overseas mm -hmm. and they wouldn't get a lot of customers. And so mm -hmm. as I stepped out of his gallery, he wouldn't take any art. So the lady at the booth, she was like, well, what did he say? And I said, well, because the soldiers been deployed, the wives are not spending the money and stuff like that, it wouldn't be a good time. And she said, you know what? She said, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to take some of your artwork, sit it at my booth, and see if I can sell it for you. And she wasn't going to take any money from me. Mm -hmm. And so I left my portfolio, left some pictures with her. And I said, by the end of that week, man, I got a phone call. She said, hey, I sold some of your art. And I, man, my, I was like, what, for real? She, I was so excited because I sold a piece of my first art, you know, being in the Army and not really putting it out there like mm -hmm. I should. So that was actually really my first professional, you know, time selling some art. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. So did you uh, continue that relationship or 
did just empower did that empower you to search out other places where you could put your artwork out? Well, because of the duty station I was at the time, there wasn't too many galleries in the area, so I just kept sending work to her mm -hmm. and kept sending it to me for a while. So uh -huh. at that point in my life, I was like, wow, I can actually do this, you know? Mm -hmm. Because of the, there was some other vendors selling African-American art. Um, I started looking at the prints that they were selling and some of the things they had in their shops. And I was like, man, who are these artists? And so I started to study those artists, the, the artwork that's been sold and find them out. Some of these guys were in the magazines, and so I started buying artist magazines and found some of those artists that I loved in those magazines and just started doing the research. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Nice. So, so let's um, uh, so let's back up a little bit. Okay. Let's talk about you as a kid. Did right. you ever think that that um, when you were drawing and creating, did you ever think that? I want to do this in, as a professional career once I'm an adult, or um, um, and did you say, seek out art schools then uh, for your higher education? What were your thoughts growing up and and looking at your current talents at that time? Well, at that time, like I was saying, though, as a young kid, I was drawing in my mom's photo albums and stuff like that. So, but then an art she was an artist, and I used to go to her house in the summertime in the country. And she had paintings on the walls that she did. So she was a huge influence. And we also had a family friend who was an artist. My dad used to take me over to his house. He had a studio in his garage. So he had his paintings hanging up. And then, you know, over time as I drew and drew and drew, I was like, man, this is something I really want to do. And so, you know, the comic book scene was going on. So I was in the mm -hmm. comic books. <laughs> so, you know, I used to trace some of the characters or try to redraw some of the characters and started creating my own stories. And from that point on, I knew that's exactly what I wanted to do. Mm. I just fell in love with the art, period. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so did you um, find any um, avenues of where, of um, art groups? Um, did you apply to like art um, exhibits? Uh, did you take art classes in um, school and high school? Oh yeah, in high school I took art classes. Um, luckily the, lo the libraries had programs back in the day as well. Mm -hmm. uh, when I used to go to the library and they had like sculpting classes and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And it's cool, you know, we, I had um, a nice art teacher, her name was Carol, and you know, she used to influence, you know, the kids that, you know, create art. And she kind of, you know, knew that I was into art and big, so she challenged me a lot. Didn't really enter a lot of contests, but I just knew that was something I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And I uh, had a friend um, named Lionel that I grew up with, he's an artist. So, you know, when you go to a school and people see you draw, they said, well, there's other kid that draws is cool too, and who's the best artist? And you know, they try to link <laughs> up, whatever. So we eventually started drawing together, becoming good friends, and start trying to create our own comic books and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So going back to your question, as far as education and school, um, I did a to junior college for a couple of semesters before I joined the army for commercial art. And then, like I said, well, in the hallway that day, and. My love was, for art was so good. That when I heard of the school called Chicago Institute of Art, mm -hmm. that's where I really wanted to go. And so I was like, man, I don't have any money to get there. And so signed up for the Army to get the GI Bill. And you know what mm -hmm. I said? The rest, the rest is history after that. The rest is <laughs> yeah. so, so that's so, so then that was uh, a solution to an, uh, a plan of the journey. Right. The, the Army, uh, the GI Bill. And so, so now this lady is uh, helping you get out there in the um, selling your work and getting paid for your artwork. Did you then eventually use the GI Bill to go to school? Well, another lucky thing about being in the military, they have a really nice by option. Mm -hmm. So luckily I was stationed by a college called Austin P University and I was up for re-enlistment. So I re-enlisted because in the Army got a program where you can re for six months go to school for six months. I didn't have to go to work. All I had to do was call, let my supervisor know I'm still alive and all that good stuff. Mm -hmm. So I went to Austin P University for a semester, um, taking 2D design, um, life drawing, and um, stuff like that. So that's the uh -huh. opportunity I got while I was in the military. So feeling, getting in that environment around other students made me even more hungry because being in the military, you don't get that. Most mm -hmm. of the on military basis teaches you like, um, security type jobs or um, classes to be a policeman and stuff like that. And they didn't really have 
or classes on the base. So that was mm -hmm. a great opportunity where I enlisted, and I took advantage of that. Mm -hmm. Nice. So, so you did go to school, and so, so tell us about when was your uh, talents? When did you direct your talents to start painting at uh, towards that level where you're painting now? Because we're looking at these paintings behind you right now. Right. And like amazing and of course we're going to share your links so everybody who's watching and listening to this podcast is already going to have access to your links to see your work so let's talk a bit little bit about that all right so my journey on the traditional painting started actually with digital painting mm -hmm. um you know back in the days before youtube there were no um videos to teach you how to digital paint and mm -hmm. luckily i ran to this kid when i was in school that was in p who's playing around his computer in Photoshop, and I was asking him, I asked him what was that he was doing. He said, I'm trying to learn how to digital paint in Photoshop, which I never saw before. And so I was like, start playing around with that. Mm -hmm. And got better with that, but I still had the hunger to learn traditional painting, and there were no schools um, teaching it. So fast forward, probably at my 20 year mark in the military, I had uh, <laughs> here in Colorado Springs once again going on to another military base, going into the mini mall on the military base, finding mm -hmm. another vendor who was selling art, and she was actually this time selling figurines. And I said, those figurines look familiar. And she was, and I was like, oh, those Thomas Blackshear, I don't know if you're wearing Thomas Blackshear is, but he's a famous illustrator. And, but mm -hmm. he was also in the figurine market. And I was like, oh man, he's carrying some of Thomas Blackshear's figurines. And she was like, oh yeah. She said, by the way, he lives here in Colorado Springs. And I was like, what? Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. So, man, I went home, tried to find phone numbers and all kinds of stuff so I can get in contact with him because I wanted to learn how to paint. And I had did research on him before I knew about his figurine line. I knew he was a painter and an illustrator. So, mm -hmm. so I found his phone number, called him up. I didn't expect anybody to answer the telephone. And uh, he answered the telephone when I was shocked. And I introduced myself and I said, hey, my name is Kevin Johnson. Um, I want to know um, if you have an internship program or apprentice program. And he was like, no. And, <laughs> and I was like, well, sorry to take up your time. Uh, you know, I was calling this. He said, well, hold on, hold on, that's what you mean. He's like, um, you going to give up that easy? Mm -hmm. And I was like, no. I said, if you're willing to talk to me, you know, I'll talk to you. So he asked me what I want to do, what were my goals and stuff like that. And um, he had some days going on at the time, but he said, hey, this is the deal. He said, give me a few weeks, we'll link up, I invite you over to my house, and we can sit down, we can talk about what you wanna do. Mm -hmm. And so, that never happened, because of the things that was going on in his life. Mm -hmm. So, two years later, I was into the comic book scene, doing the comic cons and stuff like that, so I was set up with a table in Denver at a comic con, selling my comic book illustrations, and I was there with a friend and his daughter. And so I stood up to stretch for a minute, and as I was looking out this hallway, I saw this guy walking with this young kid. Met kid. I was like, mm -hmm. man, that looks like Thomas Blackshear because I knew what his face looked like, right? Nah. <laughs> as he got close to my table, I said, man, it is Thomas Blackshear. So I stood up and said, hey, Mr. Blackshear. And he looked at me, and I said, I'm Kevin. I'm the guy who called you about the internship. He looked at me, I looked at him, and he started laughing. He said, yeah, that was about two years ago. I said, yeah. And he said, well, I'll tell you what, I'm starting a workshop this summer. Bring your mm -hmm. portfolio. I got another friend's artist. I'm going to look at portfolios. And so we're going to start this um, summer program of doing um, workshops. Mm -hmm. so that's where the journey began. That was probably around 2015. Okay. So I got lucky with that. And the funny part of the story is my friend, I told my, I asked my friend I was at the book with, I said, hey, hey, Thomas, can you mind if I take a picture with you? So I handed my friend his telephone to take a picture of me, right? So his daughter stood up and said, why are you taking a picture with that guy? And I said, what you mean? She said, well, his son right there, I'm in class with him. I said, really? <laughs> I was like, you don't know who his dad is? I, said, uh -huh. I, just, I just said, here's my phone, Google, uh -huh. Tom, Tom, Google Thomas Blackshear. Right. And so that's where my journey began in 2015, to actually learning how to paint mm -hmm. and practicing and trying to get better. Wow. That is crazy, man, because it feels like, and, I, and, I'm, and of course, you have been drawing for a long, long time, but it feels like by looking at your paintings that you've been painting a long, long time, even though, 
you know that that is a, a quite a number of years already it's mm -hmm. um compared to the rest of the other art you've been doing that is a recent recent thing all right um, but yeah yeah so tell us about the digital you said you started with digital first so what were some of the apps you were using and what and when was this that you were doing when you started your digital art well believe it or not going back to photoshop i think it was a photoshop version 4.5 or 5 of like back in <laughs> what 2003 mm -hmm. or 4 maybe uh, okay yeah. so it was mm -hmm. way back when and i was using photoshop with a mouse before mm -hmm. i had a pen tablet and eventually mm -hmm. got a pen tablet a, a wacom mm -hmm. uh, a bamboo version and okay. i started using that the digital paint like i said there was no youtube back then so i would actually find websites where guys were starting to actually do the uh, Photoshop and the digital painting. And so mm -hmm. I would start creating things out of my head or looking at photo reference and just see it. And it actually got pretty good at it. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, you got pretty good at it. You were at, at a, a comic book convention selling art. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I was kind of there for the beginning of the digital age of, uh -huh. before, it became, yeah. before it became a real thing. You know what I mean? Yeah, right, right, right. You know, uh, funny story. I was in the Marine Corps uh -huh. in uh, 92, 94. Okay. And uh, it was 1991 in uh, North Carolina, uh, Camp Lejeune, and people are telling me, hey, you know, down in this office, okay, everybody knew I draw. Everybody knew who knew me knew I drew. But I was just drawing for myself. I wasn't doing anything uh, with art that, um, be, especially when you're in the military, military is the yeah. first thing. That's your job. That's it. And right. then your hobbies. And so, but everybody knew I could draw. And so they were telling me, hey, there's a, they, these people in this building have a computer and you can draw with a computer. This is 1991. Right. And, uh, and I said, that's crazy. I said, if uh, art is done with a pencil. <laughs> 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 and, and I never went to go look. And, uh, and by the time I got out, you know, the internet started to become part of a, a normal thing. And so by 2001, 2000, 2001, I was all in on Illustrator. All right. All in. It's like, there's no way out. It's uh, if, uh, because of the, the capabilities you're able uh, to accomplish and not have uh, like a house full of uh, art materials. Right. You know, because they're not cheap. <laughs> oh, yeah. You're right about that. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, uh, but yeah, that's, uh, that's amazing that, uh, you was already into the arts. You found your way with digital art. And by looking at your uh, YouTube channel, uh, it looks like there's some um, like virtual, created a virtual art gallery. Um, so the, you had a VR headset you're working right. on, on some art. It's like you're, you, you, you are deep into the fine art painting because your paintings are amazing. And it looks like you just had a, a art uh, opening recently, a, a gallery yeah. show. Um, and then, but, but then digital is, is right there also right. part of your tool set. So what is it about you that, that makes you comfortable having this wide range of, uh, skills and focusing on building your talents that way? Well, this actually goes back to high school, you know, um, in the computer age again, before the internet, but computer programming was coming in, in the, what, the late eighties, the mid eighties. Mm -hmm. And I had a math teacher uh, who started computer programming classes. And so one of my, my school was one of the first schools to get computers in the classroom in the city. Mm -hmm. and, but it was the green screen computers. You know, it's one of all school computers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the black screen with the green letters. Green letters is the way. That's right. <laughs> so, so he was teaching programming and I took the programming class mm -hmm. and a couple of kids, I guess they were learning pretty fast and they was trying to learn how to make video games and stuff like that. And so, I got curious about learning how to do stuff like that. And so once again, joining the military, got away from it. Um, mm -hmm. But then when I took that internship, it was actually that real enlistment option for going to Austin P and learning Photoshop. And then from there, um, I took a tour and it might be the same kind of place you went to when you were in the Marines, but it was a visual information center where they did mm -hmm. graphics from a military base. Mm -hmm. So the unit was deployed and I was left on the detachment and 
I wanted to go to the visual information center where they did graphics because, you know, to learn how to digital paint in Photoshop and take it that semester of class that I was curious to see what they had in that building mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. I met up to the guy who was a manager and he gave me a tour of that facility and we walked past this one room. And so in that room, there was this guy working on the computer um, and I saw some 3D and I was like, man, what's that? Mm -hmm. And he's doing some 3D, we're gonna come and check it out. And I said, yeah, let me check that out. And he was messing around with 3DS Max at the mm -hmm. time. And I think it was like 3DS Max, like 3.5 or something like that. But anyway, um, so we sat down and I was asking questions. I said, what's this, how do you do it or whatever? And um, he said, well, you can do 3D and you can do animated and stuff like that. So I was like, man, I gotta figure out how to do this. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna tell myself right now how I got access to the software. <laughs> but, <laughs> right. But um, he had some training DVDs and stuff like that mm -hmm. uh, from the school Nolan back in the day. And um, I think the class was, with, and it was using a program called Maya. Mm -hmm. I, I only think um, Autodesk owned it at the time. It was some another company that owned it. And mm -hmm. so anyway, I had the software, it had some training. Uh, like again, before YouTube, no internet to teach you. So I struggled through it, but I started to pick up and start learning it and learning how to model and 3D and stuff like that. And then, you know, over time I started to pick it up and um, basically that's how to learn and just, just doing trial and error, just yeah. playing around with it. So curiosity and interest just... Well, the hunger was there because I was in the military mm -hmm. and I had enough access to the schools that could teach you mm -hmm. that. And mm -hmm. I was, man, I really want to know how to do this. Mm -hmm. So fast forward again, got to Fort Carson here in 2008. Um, I wanted to still work at animation and didn't know how to do it. And so once again, um, Flash 2D was out at mm -hmm. the time, Flash, my computer Flash. And so I started playing around yeah. with that and I got lucky and found a small um, animation company here in Colorado Springs. They was using Flash, but at the same time they had some 3D animations going on as well. And I was like, man, I wonder how I can get to that. So I started playing around, learning how to do flash, didn't never mess with it before in my life, but I started to pick it up and I learned how to create, cause I, you know, I did digital painting with Photoshop, so I know how to draw characters and stuff. And just put like a quick demo reel together. And so eventually got an internship at that small studio. <laughs> wow. Oh, man, so I uh, just think, just put in the work, trying to make it happen. My mm -hmm. curiosity and um, you know how people say they get lucky, but I actually worked for it and mm -hmm. on the ways to make it happen. No excuses. Mm -hmm. No excuses. Yeah. Now there's a saying, and uh, maybe I call it a saying because I read it in a comic book. Um, I, I, not, I, I have to paraphrase because I can't remember the exact words, but it says something about you know luck or fortune is when opportunity meets preparation. You are you not know? And about that. Yeah, that's it. Uh, so this is an example of that, to be honest. A um, little transparency here. So when I got out of the military, I got a job working in food service because my main job in the military was food service. And so I made the ranks, got promoted to E7. So I was a manager in, in the military of food service. And so when I got in the, out of the army, the first job I found was being a manager working a scene living in food service. Mm -hmm. And so I worked at that company for six years, but I was like, man, I, I knew I didn't want to stay there because I wanted to do art. That's where mm -hmm. I wanted to go. And I never did anything at the job to get me in trouble. I ended up hurting my hand, never took vacation. Hurt my hand, had to have surgery on my right hand. And when I went back to work, found out they let me go. Mm -hmm. And so when they let me go, I was like, man, what am I going to do? And so I ended up getting unemployment. And then after I got the unemployment, I got another job, part-time job, working at uh, another senior living, but just as a cook. I wasn't a manager. I was just cooking. Mm -hmm. And got on, um, was it Indeed? Well, I think it was Indeed. Or oh, what's the other website where you can look for jobs? Indeed. Monster, Indeed. Craigslist. And Craigslist. Craigslist. Oh. <laughs> the yard sale website. Okay, okay. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Knocked out on Craigslist and I found out there was a video company looking for interns for doing video and VR. Mm -hmm. reality. So I applied for that and I got an interview. Never did VR, nothing like that. I played around with video course because of the animation stuff I did. And as I walked in, I met the manager, the, the owner of the company. He was like, Man, I thought you were going to be a younger guy. You know, I thought, mm -hmm. Because, mm -hmm. you know, 
I was like, no, you know, well, I've been training. I showed them my portfolio stuff. And so they led me into the internship. And that's how I started to learn how to do virtual reality with 360 video. Wow. Yeah. And wow. so from that point on, um, I just got even more curious about the 3D characters, how to put them in VR and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So that's how all this stuff started coming together, man. I just kept looking for it. things, seeking things out, and they came mm -hmm. to it. It's it just crazy. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. yeah yeah it's uh it's um you know you you find things that interest you that are related to art one way or the other and you just right. want to know more and you find the time for those things you yeah. know and so that's beautiful that's perfect i cool. was going to ask you what your job was in the military but it came out already it was a it was food a, a, a uh -huh, yeah. food service. and um you know the crazy thing about it was working that manager job that they let me go i think if they would have never let me go from that job i probably would have stayed there forever <laughs> You know what I mean? How yeah. say, I know it's a cliche, but you know how one day door closes, another door mm -hmm. opens? So mm -hmm. that's basically what happened. One door door closed, yeah. another door opened. Yeah. And it put me in a position that I'm in today. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. And you got to be willing to, to help that door open. <laughs> and don't to, just... <laughs> you know, just open. I had to learn that. Yeah. Skills. I had yeah. to teach myself those skills. Even without school, if you don't, you got to be curious. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. If there's things mm -hmm. you want to learn and you're really serious about it, you got to bring that curiosity in and just start teaching yourself. Even if you don't have no teachers, just try to find out how to get that information. Right, right, right. My, all right. Okay, so now we're going to talk about your message. What is the message in your art? Because I'm looking at these paintings. They're super beautiful. They're amazing portraits. Um, then, and it's, uh, it's just so natural. Um, characters and, and they look like real people. It's not even characters. It just looks like people portraits. Right. Bro, tell us about it. Um, so once again, you know, I keep bringing the military thing up, but being in the military, you're kind of blinded with, to what's going on in the real world because you're in the mm -hmm. whole world. So when I got in the army, I was like, man, I don't want to paint military stuff because that's all I saw, which was fine. Other artists do that, but I just wanted to get away from that. And then there's other artists who paint historical things and African-American history and stuff like that. And there's a lot of artists doing that. I'm like, well, I think there's enough artists doing that. Mm -hmm. so, so I had to kind of figure out and go back to my teenage years um, when I was out with my friends hanging out in the parks, playing basketball and having fun and just, you know, those childhood memories came back to me. And he's like, you know what? I don't see a whole lot of artists doing this. So mm -hmm. this is something I wanted to do. Um, just bring back my youth a little bit kind of, you know, think about things that are going on today as well. Uh, people are awakening to different things in the world that's going on right now. And so I want to leave a legacy of art that um, is modern and people can kind of um, look at or relate to mm -hmm. today. You know what I mean? I want to tell more of today's history than the past, which is nothing wrong with that because we still need to know that. But there's a lot of artists doing that. So I wanted to tell the story of today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so you're um, I'm looking at uh, your show. One of them was Veterans Voices. Right. Another says Minority uh, Report Fine Art Show featuring Colorado Springs premier minority artists. Mm -hmm. Looks like you've been involved in different uh, exhibits. Building yeah. up your name. Yeah. Um, well, backing up again a couple years ago. Um, a few years ago, I was also at the same time as I was learning to paint, I was also reaching out and researching about different galleries um, that was, you know, out there or whatever. And so mm -hmm. in your neck of the woods, there's a gallery called Black Art in America. I found them, but back then their platform was a little different. They had a platform where, you know, as an artist, I could upload a profile page. Mm -hmm. I can upload my art so anybody can see it. But a few years later, they changed their platform where they were more gallery based, looking for artists specifically. So luckily I was studying them over time. I saw a video that they posted saying that they were looking for artists and, you know, certain price points and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And I had been watching them for a while and they had shared my artwork on their Facebook page one time. And I remember that. Mm -hmm. So when they showed the video, I shot them a quick email and said, Hey, you guys showed my artwork on your Facebook page and you're looking for artists right now. And so they responded and said, we showed you work. And I was like, yeah. So they scrolled down and found my pieces and they mm -hmm. said, please submit some more artwork to us or whatever. And I yeah. did. And so they mm -hmm. said, you know what? We think we can represent you. 
So that wasn't in Colorado. That was in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. So that took off pretty good. Started working with them for a while, and they've been representing me for almost three to four years now. But I also have another friend that lives in Atlanta that went to high school with me. And he's like, hey, man, it's cool that you're, you know, you're in this gallery and your work is getting out, but you also need to work around trying to get things out in your own backyard where you live at also. Mm-hmm. And he's right because African-American art here in Colorado Springs, even though I want to do other things, but that type of art is hard to find in the city. Mm. And so the idea was for me to just start reaching out through social media, posting my artwork and showing what I can do or whatever. And mm-hmm. so time people in the city started to take notice um some things in downtown i got artwork hanging up downtown colorado springs now in a mural project um had a show a couple of summers in a row at the one place called cottonwood which is a gallery um one of the colleges commissioned me to use my artwork on an art truck that travels throughout the city year round doing art events mm-hmm. wherever that truck goes mm-hmm. you'll, see, you'll see my art on the outside of that truck Mm-hmm. Well, because of social media, I also have other artists who know me, know I'm a veteran, and reach out to me and say, hey, these veteran shows are going on and looking for artists. Um, it'd be cool if you submit some of your work, and that's what I started doing. Mm-hmm. Very good. So you've been active in, in getting out there, um, uh, networking, building so- connections, getting your name, and on social media because I see that, you know, I don't – I'm doing these uh, artist interviews and doing the podcast yeah, and not too many artists have uh, a good webcam or lighting right. or a microphone, you know, and that's cool. Cause, cause we all have our strengths, right. not knocking anybody, but, <laughs> but like you have a cool setup going on and it's like, it feels like you're taking um, these tools seriously to further your art career. Well, you know, the funny thing about that, you inspired me to do that as well because I've been watching you. <laughs> Even though I don't respond to a lot of your videos, I still watch you or I look at you and I'm like, man, this guy's doing it, especially when you had your interview show and you actually had the lounge set up with people sitting down with you talking. Mm-hmm. Oh, I kind of took some notes from you on that point. <laughs> so I've been paying attention. I always pay attention. I'm not saying nothing, but I'm paying attention. <laughs> That's good. That's good. No, that and that and that. Uh, makes me feel good that somebody's paying attention right. um, because, man, a, a lot of my videos are sharing my process, sharing right. uh, my workflows, my techniques, my equipment, my gear. You know, um, as a matter of fact, this past week uh, on, on Monday, I, I like talked about was gear. Right. You know, that's it. I was like, you, we, as artists, you know, I'm sure you are um, not the exception. I think all of us artists have more than one pencil that we use, you know, more right. than one paintbrush. You're going to have more than one color red, you know, one more than you're going to have uh, a backup. <laughs> and, uh, and when we look at professional artists on the internet and they complain that, Oh yeah, my computer's down. So I can't do art. I'm like, what are you, what are you, what are you talking about? What do you mean? <laughs> you know, <laughs> you should have a, it's, I know it's not it's not cheap. I know art materials are not cheap. Computers are not cheap, but you should have a backup. Even if that second computer is not so good, well, you know, is because these are your tools. Well, yeah, I remember when I first when I got my first computer back in the early two thousands, and it graphic card was terrible, and startup <laughs> modem and all that good stuff. And <laughs> computers back then cost like three thousand dollars. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I made mm-hmm. the sacrifice, saved some money, and got one. And you can be computers all lot cheaper now, to be honest. I mean, you mm-hmm. know. Or like three to four hundred dollars, you know. Right, right. And so, if we look at them as tools, and there's going to be a return of investment, whether you do art as a hobby or, or you're serious as a professional and want to build uh, your art career, we have to use these tools. We have right. to find a way to understand what the tools are, what do we need, and so you know, it feels good to see you paying attention to some of the streams and. You know, taking notes from it because that's how I learn. I learn from watching others. As soon as I started streaming uh, with um, a Facebook Live a long time ago, mm-hmm. I was streaming way before that with some other app, uh, UStream, I think. And it's like, okay, I can, I, I like the the fact that these tools are at the at the palm of our hand with our smartphone or um, you know a tablet. And then, well. Uh, I, 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 like you, uh, as a grown adult, took on an apprenticeship to learn 
uh, video um, production in a studio. And that's where you see that lounge, those streams where I was uh, lounging and doing my uh, coffee break with DTM and having interviews. It's like, yes, because I need to learn. I need to know what's out here these folks right. are doing because right. I want to learn so I can maximize right. these tools. Right. Yes. You know, yeah, you know, because, you know, a lot of, it's, a, it's almost like an even playing ground now, you know. Mm -hmm. um, back in the day, like I told you, how I used to buy magazines to read about and research artists. And some of those artists would be in the back of one of the magazines called Upscale Magazine. I don't know if you know about that magazine. Mm -hmm. And they mm -hmm. would show these fine artists in the background, you know, showing their artwork and doing a little bio on them. And so come to find out those guys were paying like two to $3,000 for those ads in the back uh -huh. of the magazines or whatever. So with social media and doing these videos and this content we're doing now, you don't have to pay for it. A lot of it's free. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I have a lot of artist friends that I used to encourage for them to get on social media and show the work because you say, hey, Kevin, man, we see you getting out there. You're putting your work out. You're getting some attention. People are helping you out. I was like, well, you guys, you can do the same thing, you know. Mm -hmm. I, I helped a couple of them to show them how to do a little bit, but, you know, you got to want to do this. You know, it's mm -hmm. not made for everybody. I, in the Army, I used to tell my soldiers in the job that we had, only the strong can survive. Mm -hmm. But you got so mm -hmm. much opportunity out there now, things that you can take advantage of, that I don't see why everybody's not taking advantage of it. And it might not be meant for everybody, but mm -hmm. people might go to the hobby, but if it's something that you want to have as a career, nobody's gonna come and save you. Mm -hmm. Nobody's gonna help you. Um, going back to Thomas Blackshear, you know, one of the things he told me was, he was like, man, you're really doing it, I'm proud of you. you you're doing it without no help. And he said, it's just crazy how your career just started taking off. Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> I had to put the work in, man. Nobody gave it to me. I had to do it myself, you know. That's right. That's right. Okay. All right. So I'm going to ask you a couple more questions. And um, But everything you're saying is amazing. I love it. And uh, thank you for sharing with us. I appreciate um, it. If you were to be able to go back uh, to the beginning of, um, to that point in your life, uh, you yourself right now, this, this person you are now, this artist, this Wait. talented, creative person could go back 20 years, 30 years, whenever it was that you were joining the army uh -huh. and, uh, and talk to your, that, that self of that time and give them a piece of advice. Oh, um, what would it be? <laughs> oh, feeling. I wouldn't, well, I don't know, man. I don't know if I would have told myself anything different, you know, I think this journey has got me to where I'm at today, you know, there were times where I was like, man, I want to get out of the military, you know, this ain't happening for me. Mm -hmm. But now that all this stuff is going on, I realize that things are meant to be the way they happen for you. If I didn't join the military, if I didn't meet my wife, I didn't have my kids, and if I would have stayed at home, it might have been a different story, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. This might have been the plan to make it all come together, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, the only thing I think I would have told myself um, going back would probably be just keep going. You're going to make it. Um, if you're kind of on the right track, but kind of look at things um, that you could do in the military even more to kind of promote yourself or get yourself out there. Mm -hmm. But like we didn't have this type of tech back then that we got now, mm -hmm. but I would have told myself just keep drawing every day. Um, just, just keep working on your craft. It's going to happen for you. No matter what the struggles are, deployments or whatever, just stay on the path and you want to get there. Yes. All right. That's good. Um, what can we expect out of uh, your uh, art future? What can we expect out of Kevin Antonio Johnson, the well, artist? A couple of things. Of course, I'm going to keep on creating. I'm going to do more videos and stuff like that. Eventually, I want to do, be like you again and do some live streams instead of just Recording video, but I would actually do a few um, demo videos where I'm actually live. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to be in your neck of the woods on uh, mm -hmm. March 30th for our show at Black Art America. The opening reception is actually the 1st of April, and it's going to be at um, 1802 Connolly Drive um, in Atlanta, Georgia. At Georgia, I think it's at 30344 Black Art America. It'll be myself and another artist from Africa, Two Men Show. This will be my first big show out of the state of Colorado Springs. And I'm looking forward to anybody that's in their area, they can come out. Um, so I think it'll be a nice event. I get to link up with my friend Lionel. The one I told you about in high school, the kid that they linked me up with him. 
Haven't mm-hmm. seen him in about 30 years, man. So <laughs> next him back with him, hanging out with him, and then just I'm going to make my ride way around Atlanta, look at the art scene there in Atlanta. Well, well, I will definitely catch up with you then. I'll see you in person, bro. Oh, I appreciate yeah, that. It. Sure. Yeah, that's awesome. I'm looking at it. It's on a Thursday. It's like, that's kind of strange. Yeah, well, uh, they'll put it up on Thursday for you to walk in, but I think the actual reception is going to be on the first where they're actually presenting. Oh, Saturday, on Saturday. Yeah. I got you, got you. Not true. Well, we'll make sure that this podcast is out before that so everybody get familiar with you. Yeah, well, I appreciate nice. it. Nice, nice. Well, uh, and, I'll, and this is great. Thank you so much for your time, and uh, I appreciate you sharing your experience, a bit of your experience with us. Um, it, it's always uh, it's inspiring to hear other artists and hear their path and hear some of the steps and decisions they made in their life and where it leads them to because that gives us all hope if you're a normal human being normal human person who can achieve things then that means so can i right all right well i appreciate it thank you so much for your time and we'll catch up with you at a later date thank you so much i appreciate you thank everybody for joining in The Artist King Podcast is made possible by the support of our sponsors, Azalea Creative Group, Sketchable Plus, and Visual Artworks. Once again, I am DTM, and I look forward to sharing the business of art with you. Until next time, stay creative.